Hi, my name is Jennifer and I won the Technovation competition in 2016. So a really interesting field uh, in computer science that's emerged over the past 50, 60 years or so is AI or artificial intelligence, which is the idea that computers themselves can have some sort of form of intelligence that will allow them to solve important problems. And so this development is very exciting because it allows computers to take on roles that previously we only thought that humans could possibly do. So today we're going to be speaking with some leading researchers in the field of AI to hear about how they're applying AI to their work and what sorts um, of, of achievements and research they're conducting to make AI even more intelligent. Hi, my name is Kiri Wagstaff and I am a researcher at the NASA Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena, California, where I have two jobs. I spend half my time doing machine learning work and artificial intelligence and the other half doing Mars rover planning for the Opportunity Mars rover. So today we'll talk a little bit about machine learning and some of the challenges that we face today in that area. Um, as you've heard, I'm sure, uh, all of the disciplines that are out there are collecting more and more data on a daily basis. This ranges from biology to astronomy to zoology and other areas. And at JPL, we're very interested, of course, in planetary science and exploring new worlds. And every time we send a new mission to a new environment or new planet, it inevitably has instruments that can collect data at a higher rate or higher resolution or higher frequency. And we're always getting bigger and bigger data sets. And one of our big challenges is still finding out within these large data sets, what is the most interesting data? We want to be able to focus our limited human attention on the really interesting tidbits within potentially very large data sets. And we also want to be able to find features that we know are of great interest um, ahead of time. So I'll zoom in on just one of those data sets. Uh, that would be data collected by the HiRISE instrument, which is currently in orbit around the planet Mars. And it's taking pictures on a daily basis at extremely high resolution, giving us great variety and great diversity in those images that are being collected. So an analogy would be if you had a friend on Facebook or Instagram who is posting pictures constantly of everything they see. But not only are they posting hundreds of pictures every day, but each picture they post is over 100 times the size of your desktop computer. So there's no way you can keep up with this friend, right? There's no way you can see all of the interesting things that that person is posting. However, you might really be interested only in their pictures that contain specific things, like the beach, or only their pictures that have their children. So if there were some way for you to zero in on just those images, um, then you would be able to find them quickly. HiRISE has the same problem because it's taking extremely high resolution pictures of Mars, and it's a big planet. Well, the HiRISE team's motto is explore Mars one giant image at a time. And again, that's really not realistic. You're not going to have time to look at every single giant image that HiRISE sends back. But instead, you can use machine learning to train a system that can go out and find the images that you care about. So here's one example. We took um, five different interesting features on the surface of Mars, including craters and dust dunes and dark slope streaks, et cetera. And we put those um, in combination, presented them to a machine learning algorithm, and trained it up to recognize automatically what those particular five features are within these extremely large, large images. Then we're able to take that trained classifier and apply it to new images. And really, this works exactly like if you're on Facebook and you post a picture of your friends, and Facebook says, would you like to tag these people? And it already knows, with a box around their faces, who your friends are, and it's already suggested their names without you even saying anything. You have already trained a machine learning classifier on Facebook who your friends are from your previously tagged images. So we do the same thing with a science perspective in tagging images that contain craters and other interesting scientific features. So to summarize, machine learning is a way for us to train systems that learn from examples, and we're using it not only for places like Facebook, but also to advance science, to allow scientists and anyone else who's interested to find features they care about on the surface of Mars. And we're currently extending this also to other bodies, other planets. You will see, if you go on the Planetary Image site, there are categories for Cassini images. Those are the ones of the Saturn system and also for the MSL rover. So instead of an orbital view of Mars, you can zoom in on the rover scale view, and you can pull up only images that contain, for example, rover wheels, 
that, are, that appear in the rover's images of itself, or the horizon, or other interesting features on the surface of the planet. So thank you. <laughs>